All right, all right, all right. Hello, everyone. What's up with you? How's it going? Hope you're great. Hope you're good. Hope you're feeling fantastic. I'm not feeling fantastic. I feel a bit ill. Um, but I'm still going to bring you a little video because that's the kind of generous guy that I am. So this is a, a, a mini episode of um, Peeping Tom Bombadil, which is when I peep on other people's games that have been shared to me by other members of the uh, the Discord community. If you've played like a really fun game recently that you'd be happy to share, um, please do send me a little message on Discord. I'm always looking for games to share. It's always fun to commentate. Um, so yeah, just uh, just uh, if you fun game, send me the passwords and uh, I'll do my best to get a video up. So this one, oh good, there goes the mic. So this one was um, a little game between Price three three five and um, and Hybris ninety three. Two two um, two really really nice guys, good players who've uh, featured on this channel before. Um, and they actually both contacted me, <laughs> to, so I got spammed with loads of messages. Like, so that was, that was nice. So that they both were were keen to share this one. And it's an interesting one. I kind of I started making a whole video, um, and I kind of screwed up the recording. But I did end up watching the game through, and um, it's one of those games where it's got a very interesting ending. <laughs> so what we're going to do with this one is start at turn number seven. Um, I'll start give you a mini little summary of what's happened so far. So like previously on uh, Peep and Tom Bombadil. Um, Basically, Price has just been ruined. <laughs> Price is the shadow. And the shadows had terrible luck, terrible dice, no Corsairs, no cruel weather. Um, started to go for Lorien and got hit by a power too great and Celeborns. Um, candles for corpses for three. Uh, just nothing going very well. Terrible combat dice. The only real thing that's gone well for them is they've just quite smoothly, easily taken down um, Rohan. But if you look at the board... You're thinking, um, where are they going to get their victory points? You've got a very stacked Minas Tirith, super stacked Lorien. Um, quite a long... Oh, sorry, this mic's being silly. Um, quite a difficult route to Dol Amroth. So, yeah, not not an easy victory. Meanwhile, the Fellowship um, has just danced their way to Mordor. They hadn't been revealed once until they got to Moranon. Um, they've got a pretty stacked Fellowship still. Still got Aragorn, sorry, uh, Strider. Things are looking fine and dandy. So um, as we go into this turn, turn number seven, um, the shadow does have a nice, a nice uh, selection of cards to play with. They've got uh, some good attack cards, good deadly strife, um, uh, another Kai slash we come to kill. They've got some cards to throw at the at the fellowship as well. They've got Isidus Bane and Lure of the Ring, uh, me and and a red tile, um, and also on on the free people side, they've got a uh, kid and ships to potentially. Just protect Dol Amroth. Do they have any elves left? They do have two elves left, so that could be handy if this becomes a thing. Um, but they may want to defend Wood and Realm. Um, they also have an end card, Mithril Coat and Sting, um, and through then Night Slash Confusion. Um, note, Warm with Sauron Tall is on the board, as is Power Too Great, so um, Mithril Coat and Sting is under threat. The rolls are pretty, pretty Decent rolls for both sides, I guess. Um, well, better for the shadow, I think, in terms of more, more attacks. Um, the three people will probably be looking for more more movement in in uh, in Mordor. People move. It's an eye. Two reveal goes for the random. It's Legolas. Absolutely perfect. Does warm us on tall, and we lose um, we lose Mithril Coat. So that's very sad for the three people. You don't. Don't like to lose Mithril Coat and Sting, but in this situation, looking at the Hunt Pool, which is also important, there's only one red tile in there. So if you do play Mithril Coat and Sting, it can easily get removed with Warm as Sauron Tall anyway. Um, and the only tile that you really want to use it on is probably the red tile anyway. So yeah, it's not the best game for Mithril Coat and Sting anyway. Lure of the Ring is played. It's only a Hobbit. So that's also good for the um, for the free people. The best one that you could have uh, drawn, really. Um, don't get to use Warmest on Tall this time. Then they flip the Fellowship. Red Tile goes in. Uh, fellowship moves again. Draws another eye. This time it's three revealed. And goes for random, and it's Strider. Okay, so at this point in the game, you're not too unhappy to see that. I mean, obviously Strider's hiding ability is nice, but it's efficient, so... Um, and that's probably your main priority at this point. Doesn't look like time's going to be an issue. You just want to get over the line. 
Um, okay, now Bor Boromir takes over. Um, they take over the rest of Rohan using a, a hybrid die. Another ring is used. The ring is used to um, that shouldn't yeah to hide the fellowship. Because at this point you're thinking, I've got two rings left, I might as well use one to hide, and then next turn I can hopefully use one to, to get me over the line and win the game. Because you can't use two rings in one turn. Now we get Isildur's Bane. What's it going to be? Oh, baby. It's a three. So that's kind of a blessing and a curse. Ideally, with Isildur's Bane in this situation, you want to get one of the normal threes. So a three is good in the sense that it does max damage, and it doesn't, um, you know, it goes straight onto the corruption. However, you're really hoping for those stop tiles to buy you some time here. So getting the red tile does actually hurt. Um, so I think you've probably got to go for that at this point. You've got to take some risks. Um, still unlikely that you'd get the red tile. And there's not many eyes left, so they're not so much of a worry. Um, at the very least, you might you know, at least remove a, a blue tile or one of the, the low tiles. So, yeah, good and bad. Pass. Um, the mouth comes into play in uh, Moria. More armies start moving around. Um, Fold goes to Druiden Forest, and this army comes up here to try and take Erebor. Um, oops. Sorry, accidentally moving the size there. Um, Musters an elite in Woodland Realm. Then they go for Minas Tirith. So looking at this, what have we got here? We've got a 7 army against an 11 army. Um, typically, you've got a lot of reinforcements outside. Um, but you, as, as, as Shadow, I'm not expecting to take this. Um, maybe, or with a Deadly Strife, you've always got a, a decent shot, actually. So yeah, that could swing it their way. Let's see. Deadly Strife against Confusion. Very strong Deadly Strife. Um, five hits. Versus only two back. So that is... That's pretty awful. The luck here is starting to swing a little bit back towards the shadow. That's an excellent... Um, excellent Deadly Strife. Um, Price gets one hit on the press. Um, and the free people get one hit back. And they are not able to press to finish off Minas Tirith. Now we go on to turn number eight. Um, Shadow draws into Shadow's Gather, so that could be very, very useful indeed. And Shelob's Ahalea. Um, meanwhile, free draw Horn of Gondor on Faramir's Rangers. They decide to start off by playing Horn of Gondor. Hmm. I'm not sure about this play. I'm not sure about this play. In my humble opinion, as an average War of the Ring player, I think that um, you should, unless you have a really good reason not to, you should just move straight away in Mordor. You're only up against one eye, and there's still, what, two red tiles that they could throw in there? Um, also, you're kind of... Un there's a lot of threes in there. If you hit a three, then at least you're down to Gollum, and then you these guys aren't going to reveal you, and you can actually just finish the bloody game <laughs> quite quickly. Whereas by playing Horn of Gondor, um, the threes no longer conveniently take out all your guys, and then you're stuck with a bobbit, um, and it's just not as not quite as a smooth transition down to Gollum. Plus, it allows the shadow to do this, but. A nasty little red tile into the pool, which we don't like to see as the free people. Now we move. And there we go. You get the three. So, um, there, you know, if you were worried about corruption, you could have just used his hide ability if you had gone all the way down. It's only one corruption different. I, I, yeah, I think I'd have rather. And, and you've, you've, take, you've had to now dodge two red tiles rather than just one red tile so worked out okay but still not not ideal um price g uses the uh the ring to draw a a, 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 a c um sorry a character card uh they draw into cruel weather a bit too late but they're obviously hoping for the other red tile or something just to just to throw at those pesky hobbits you know just some rocks to throw at them as they're scampering up Mount Doom 
anything to slow them down. A couple of trip wires so that um, the fat hobbit will fall over. Oop, and then we move, and there we get the red tile. There we get the red tile. Ouchie. So that's painful. It's only the red one, though. It's not Shellob, so not ideal. We lose the bobbit, go back one. Gollum comes into play. Um, meanwhile, the shadow um, gets rid of a power too great using Olokai and Ringwaits for a board. Ooh, two very nice cards. Always painful to lose those two, but, you know, Shadows Gather is amazing, so I think needs must in this situation. Now we Shadows Gather. Doop, doop, doop. So that's really handy because the army didn't ha ever even have to go in here to back up Minas Tirith. They can scoot their way, excuse me, up to Lorien and help out in that fight. And now, this is looking a bit more precarious. Okay, Lorien is still... I think, again, very, very stacked stronghold. Um, but we've just seen what happened here with the Deadly Strife, so who knows. Goes for Lorien. Character card. It's going to be Crawler's Death against something. Um, Crawler's Death against Shield Wall. And then we get that roll. Woof. Hello, Mr. Price. Where have you been hiding your sixes, sir? Um, Hybris gets three hits back, so one is blocked by shield wall, but, you know, in that situation, a shadow, you're more than happy to get two hits. Um, they decide to press and draw. They draw into desperate battle. Um, and then we get... Um, Oh, so Price no card. He doesn't play the Desperate Battle. Okay. Um, wait, didn't he draw into Desperate Battle? Oh, okay. So he must have drawn the wrong type of card. My bad. Okay, right. Draws into Foul Stench, which isn't really worth playing. Um, still gets three hits. The sixes are coming thick and fast against two. And these two... In an average game, I don't... It doesn't usually go like this. But these two strongholds have just melted. They've just absolutely melted. Didn't even need to be reinforced by the respective armies that were sat outside them. Um, presses again. And then just gets two more sixes. Just rolls two more sixes. That's, I think, what? Um, I think that's seven sixes they rolled. Um, which is nuts. Um, so, yeah. Boom. Lorien done. Minas Tirith done. And that's how quickly a game of War of the Ring can change um, in one fell swoop. So they haven't actually taken Minas Tirith yet, but Minas Tirith is on the brink. Um, and now they just basically need to get three more victory points. Where would you get those? Erebor, Dale, uh, Pelagir, Dale. Sorry, in the Pelagir, Erebor. If you suddenly get Corsairs, you can blast your way into Dol Amroth. they got options. Um, decide to attack Minas Tirith. Gets a six, of course. You know, and believe me, Price could not roll sixes for the life of him earlier in this game. Um, but yep, suddenly that's all done. And as a free people, having been absolutely cruising, I think they're on like net negative six or something like that. Net negative seven going into Mordor. Now you're on plus, you're on, you're on four corruption. Um, and uh, time, and, and you're suddenly thinking, am I going to be able to even get over the line here? You know, like I, they need they need to have a, you think if they get a decent roll next turn, the odds are that they'll be able to do it. But it's suddenly no longer a foregone conclusion. It's suddenly quite... quite. Uh, I'd be quite nervous. I would be quite nervous as the free people at this point. Having been very, very comfortable not very long ago. So this army comes out here. wonder where they're going. Are they going to try and... I guess you could either go to 1, 2, 3, 4 or 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, go for one of those two. But Let's be real, you're not going to really have time um, unless, you know, the free people have some absolutely horrendous rolls next turn. Uh, so maybe that's why they decide not to do that and instead decide to go for Erebor. Yeah, I think that's a wiser move given the dice economy here. Don't think you can win the game this turn as, as Shadow. Um, but, well, actually, could you? If you attack with that dice, uh, there's no leadership though. Yeah, that's the issue. And they had to use Ring Racer Abroad earlier. If you had Ring Racer Abroad, you could actually, in theory, win the game this turn. But not anymore. 
Um, Hybris draws a character card. Uh, you could have done with Gandhi in this fight um, not long ago, potentially. Although, how many? Uh, well, not as useful because these bad boys are there. Anyway. Leadership moves around, prepping to take down um, Erebor. Starts mustering in um, Don Amroth. Um, goes for Erebor. Again, you know, so what's this? Um, six against ten. By the kind of typical rule that you need to generally need double the army size, you probably expect um, a marginal hold for the free people, slight favoring the free people here. Charge against Fel Stench. Free, of course, no hits of charge. I hate charge, always, almost always does nothing for me. Um, okay, that's a little bit better. Um, oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong dice. So that's not better. So Hybris is rolling awfully, gets nothing back, press draw. Um, and what do they go for? No card, no card. Two sixes, pretty good. Only one hit back for Hybris. So yeah, in these situations where the, where the Shadow's not doing huge damage, you really need to hit them back while you've got the numbers. So yeah, I mean, better than the other two, but still not looking good for Erebor, especially if they draw into a strong card. But such as, yeah, Relentless Assault could do it. Crawler's Death could do it. Going into turn nine. Let's see what we get here. Okay, so the free people, if all goes smoothly, should have enough to get over the line here. So one hide, one move, maybe one hide, one move. So that would need, you need four, they've got three and a ring. So if they get revealed here, um, they need to use the ring. If they get a red tile, mm, a red tile and a reveal, which it isn't there. So even a Shellob doesn't mean they can't win this turn. But it would have, I'd really have to be a low Shellob, I think. So they hide, um, and they'd have to not get a reveal on the next move. Erebor, they attack Erebor. Um, plays Crawler's Death. Gets two hits. The Dwarves are pretty pitiful at the moment. Only one hit back. Um, can't press. Fellowship moves. And it's Shellob. Oh my god. Oh my god. And what? They're going to roll. Three, two, one. Five. Well, not the fabled Shellob six. But it's nasty sister, the Shellob five. Luck has turned. Yes, indeed. So now we're up to... Um, <laughs> luck has turned. Thank the maker. So, so we're up to to nine corruption. Um, and I would now kill. So that's awful. So these two kill. Um, a three would not quite kill. But you could hide. But then you're basically you need to get a blue or a zero. And what you need luck. Now the luck. The, I'd say the the percentage of winning has swung round to about. I don't know, probably 70, 80, 90%. I don't know. Let's, let's say 80% to the uh, the shadow. Um, and that's the third red tile we've seen. Two that have actually stopped and one that has been as part of Isildur's Bane. And just to rub it in, um, Price just decides to, to throw in another red tile, you know. <laughs> Price says, here's your next tile. Hybris says, lovely. Hybris decides to move. <laughs> and of course, it is the next time. No way. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And with that, the Fellowship have died. And process, I take back all my complaints. There's been a few discussions about like the amount of luck in this game. And this is a prime example. I mean, the free people, doesn't matter how well you play. Doesn't matter how well you play. If you get a mortar track like that, you cannot win the game. You have a 0% chance of winning the game um, with that mortar track. What are you meant to do? What the hell are you meant to do? You get three red tiles, two eyes, a red... Um, well, a fourth red tile that is, is sort of baned. Um, yeah, it's just... It's unbeatable. So, yep, yeah, that's the War of the Ring experience. Um, I've never had the fabled four red tiles myself. I think I've had three red tiles in a, in a game. Um, never when I'm Shadow. I think I've probably had two two red tiles when I'm Shadow. 
Uh, but I've certainly had three when I'm playing as the free people. But yeah, so, um, you know, the Java gods giveth and the Java gods taketh away. I hope that was a, a fun little taster of the, the pain and sorrow that this game can cause you to feel. And the mad um, variations and, and, and luck that... that um, that we all go through at some point or other. So yeah, commiserations, hybris. But the first half of the game was was also very, very imbalanced. So it's just, yeah, it's just how it goes. Peace.